It is the 2025th year of our Lord, and it just might be the Linux desktop year. I could have also named this video, Microsoft Thinks You're Too Stupid, or I could have named this video, Apple is incapable. All would have equally done well, and they all are leading to the fact that it actually might be the year of the Linux desktop. Microsoft is plugging more holes that let you use Windows 11 without an online account. So what does that mean? It simply means that if you want to use Windows 11 now, when you start up a PC, you got to be signed into Microsoft Live. Oh, it used to be known as Hotmail, by the way, that was my first account, primogen at hotmail.com. It's still, it's still out there. It's still a thing. It's just I made it when I was like in fifth grade or something. So yes, Microsoft wants you to use that service to log into your PC. The thing that's actually making everybody super upset at Microsoft is this right here is what Amanda said. Okay, get ready. We are removing known mechanisms for creating a local account in the Windows setup experience, OOBE. What is an OOBE? Best left up to the readers. I assume it means out of box experience, but... I don't know, none of those letters showed up in whatever she just said, so I have no idea, Amanda. While these mechanisms were often used to bypass Microsoft account setup, they also inadvertently skipped critical screens, potentially causing users to exit OOBE with a device that is not fully configured to use. So what is she saying here? I just want you to think about this for a second. Just, if you were at your job and there was a way that your customers used your product, and if they used that product in this kind of power feature mode, something that allowed them a bit more autonomy, but they could potentially hurt themselves, would you A, fix the reasons why they could hurt themselves and ensure that the experience is properly gone through whether they have a live account or more of this power offline account? Or B, would you just take away the feature? Well, Microsoft has chosen to simply take away the feature and then blame it on the fact that you're too stupid to understand what's going on. Okay? They didn't, they're like, whoa, 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 we can't give all these people all these privileges because if we do, they're going to accidentally mess something up and then they're going to be in a sad, sorry state. This is actually such an, a, just a crazy way to respond to a situation. Because you know, you know what the real news is, right? You know why this is happening. Now, I already know for a fact I'm going to get a bunch of comments and people are going to be like, uh, well, actually, you can disable it. if you well, Actually, you could disable it. I don't care that you can disable it, okay? It is the default. It is what is on currently, and you know what that means, especially when it comes to Microsoft. It will not just be the default. It will be the only way to go at some point here in the future. So, number one, Copilot, taking snapshots, being able to semantically search all of your history. If you don't think that's going to be used as a way for Microsoft to make money, you don't understand quarterly reports. And then number two, they're already serving you ads in the startup menu. Think about this for a second. You buy the hardware. You buy the hardware from a company that licenses the hardware along with Windows. So you get it all together in one package so you don't have to install it yourself. It's easy. It's simple, right? Wrong. You don't actually own it for whatever reason. Instead, they can serve you ads through the thing that you bought. Like this is, it's actually insane. Now, right now, I know, I already know there's going to be a comment, okay? It's going gonna, it's gonna to read something like this. Well, Netflix, okay, hey, first off, we're not talking about Netflix, okay? Let's not, what about is people? Okay, we're not doing that. Second, can we just agree that this is weird behavior? You know what this is for. They want everyone to have an account. They want everyone to be online. They want everything to run through that because they want to sell you ads because ads are the future. Ads and AI, and even better, ads made with AI. That's right. We're going to burn down a forest so we could show a custom image of your mom selling you a product. Damn, the future is going to be good. So this is naturally leading people like Jonathan Blow to say, guys, this just means we'll stop using Windows for as many things as possible. If you think that's not true, just keep going. And he is right. People are hating more and more on Windows. These, Which is wild because Windows has such a market share on gaming and somehow they're continuously fumbling the bag and everybody cannot wait for Steam to get closer and closer to making gaming on Linux the greatest and best experience. And all of this has happened over the last year, which has led many, many people to just dislike the Windows experience. It is chunky. It feels laggy. It's not a good experience. It feels unreliable. And now you're getting ads. Now you can't have offline accounts. This is pushing people towards Linux or Mac. And this is why this video, I want to call it the year of the Linux desktop, because it just seems like every other option is trash.
Look at this. This is Apple. This is Apple's new calculator. They released this operating system for people to use. OS X 26 Tahoe, that sweet California edition, and it came bloated AF. Calculator using 32 gigabytes of RAM, baby. A company famed for its ability to design amazing interfaces gave you this. Yes, look. <laughs> I mean, you could have at least aligned the delete. This is just shoddy work. In fact, it's so bad, I'm positive that an LLM did not contribute to this because it is actually that bad. You like rounded corners? Did you like web development in about 2009? Yeah, this is what we're getting. Just every button is going to be rounded AF. <laughs> You want a rounded corner on a rounded corner? Welcome to Mac OS X 26. I was right on that. I was right on this one. I am right on that one still. I think the sad part is, is that Apple, like when I used it as a developer 2011 through 2016, it honestly was like really amazing. It was a very good experience from 2016 to about now i've been using linux in those first few years i'm not gonna lie to you i didn't have the greatest experience but i used it anyways because i just didn't want to use anything else you know i just forced myself to use it and love it and fall in love with it and that's that but mac has always been this thing where developers have universally tended to agree that you get this out of the box pretty smooth experience and that's why we use it okay we don't want to be fiddling around with stuff but here's the thing is i actually think people like personalizing what they use they actually like being able to create something that is their own and yes i understand that the pressures of life and the pressures of stuff make it so that customizing everything can be a headache and that is why omachi right here is so good if you have not used it i got the privilege to use it on a brand new out of the box framework pc on a seven day, 24 seven programming adventure just last week. And it was honestly an amazing experience. All the shortcut keys mimicked Mac OS X, kind of hurt me a little bit like full screen being shift F11, but I could also just change it to what the Lord intended, which was super, uh, super F, okay? That's, that's the correct one is the F, okay? It's mod F, it's not shift F11. That's crazy, okay? I don't want that in my life. And there's a bunch of other key combos that I would inevitably change because it's not the way I, would, I, I want to do it. And the NeoVim experience is not the way I want to do it, but I've already created all these. I can just bring in what I like and just morph it into it. But out of the box, Omachi feels good. I don't know how to explain this other than if you are using Mac OS X or even more so if you are using Windows if you were to go off and use Hyperland, how it's been set up with Omachi, you would be shocked at how good it feels. Now, this is my previous computer, so it actually has my personalized version of Hyperland. It doesn't have Omachi installed, but it also has Waybar, the same thing that's in Omachi, which is you can see which desktop I'm in. You can see the nice time and the date. You can see the power, the volume, what I'm doing on my CPU, how much RAM units I'm using, which I'm using entirely too much RAM units if I'm connected to the internets what my cpus are doing which is i'm not doing a lot with my cpus right now but you can just see so much and it feels so good and it's just been set up exactly the way i want it to be set up and this truly is the magic and honestly when it comes to omachi all of this is just set up for you you don't do any configuration but you gotta learn you gotta take a little bit of time so when i say that it, this is the year of the linux desktop what i mean is that there has never been a better time for you to make the switch. Mac has clearly lost the ability to deliver good UIs. The reason why I want to use them is good UIs and battery power. Now it's just a battery. Now you're buying an expensive ass battery and that is it. You can get the same thing feeling just as crispy smooth and in fact looking better for much, much less the cost than buying a nice battery. That is it, that's what you're getting. Windows, I don't even need to defend it, okay? It's not good. It is chunky. It is slow. It is just irredeemable what they have done to it. It honestly feels like a GeoCities website morphed into an operating system. That is what it feels like. It is awful, okay? I hate the fact that for the last year and a half, every time I start up my streaming PC because I have hardware that depends on Windows, which I'm going to replace because of this, but when I start it up, it requires me to say, no, I don't want to upgrade my account to some sort of subscription model. Every single time. There's, there, there's only remind me later and yes, please. There's no, hey, shut the hell up. I never want to see this again. Yet with Linux, it's freedom, baby. And I think 
that it just might be the year of the Linux desktop. And when I say that, of course, I do mean for developers. I don't think my mom's probably ever going to learn Linux. I don't think she's going to do well with a tiling window manager. I don't think she's going to be like, I got to go to my code. I got to go back to my b browser code, browser code, browser code, browser, whatever this one is. Back to the, oh my gosh. Right? She's just not, that's not her mode, okay? She has like 9,000 tabs open. She exists in Chrome and she still hates Windows. So it's never been a better time, and I it strongly encourage you to try it. If none of that convinces you, this has to convince you. Tej was able to get it installed in 1 minute and 48 seconds. That means he went from just a bio screen to logging in and having everything done in about 2 minutes and 10 seconds total. It doesn't take a lot to give it a shot, and it works on older PCs, and it will actually make them feel smooth. At the end of the day, you know... This is all about just enjoying what you're building and part of your environment is going to be part of your joy. If you're working in a very beautiful, well put together, very smooth experience, you're going to enjoy it. Thus, you're going to have more fun developing anyways. Because I honestly, let's be real. Between the times of saying cursor fix this and surfing Twitter, you just want something to look nice. So why don't you just give it a shot? The name is the Primogen. By the way, did you like the video? You should like it. I, it would mean a lot to me. Thank you.